There we go, there's our little bass line now. You can, you can hear it's incredibly loud. You can hear that there's really lots of swing on the groove, so let's put a, let's put a good swing on there. Nice. I actually prefer the second half. Let's, so let's cut that, move that over. It's always good to do the little dance while you're doing it. Then it's, you, know, you see if you can get into it. Right, so there's a little groove. Let's uh, save that. Now, I've played that in F minor, in the key of F minor, and the reason being is because I've already recorded some vocals which are in that key, which should hopefully slot right in with that bass line. Hopefully. That's going to be coming up in, the, uh, in another episode. Okay, there's a basic thing. Let's create a little top line. Maybe uh, we can use the FM8. Let's have a look at this. Now, the FM8, I like this because it has this little attributes window here. Now, if I zoom in on this here, we can actually sort of pick, uh, let me see, I can move around. We go synth, we go uh, analog, we go percussive, um, we'll come out of there, and then we can pick the first, let's have a look, chord sequence looks quite interesting. There's a nice little sound. Let's create a little groove with that. Let's stick something like that in it quickly. Again, we can quantize that. We can do it over here. This quantize over here is actually non-destructive quantize, believe it or not, and that means that it's uh, you can actually take the quantize off. If you were to quantize it in this window here, this is what you call destructive quantize, um, which we can go over to the 16 swing groove, and this will actually, if I apply that quantize there, that actually applies it to the part, and you can't get out of that. It's actually so there's two different ways of quantizing something. Okay, basically thing, save it as we go. Um, okay, let's else, what else can we put in here? We've opened up a reactor somewhere, so let's go to reactor, see what kind of sounds we got in reactor. We've got carbon uh, in reactor. Reactor is an amazing thing to get into, uh, far too uh, in depth and detailed to go into here, but what I've got is, uh, is carbon, which is a really nice preset ensemble that comes with it. And we've got to find a little sound here called Sprawn Zero, which uh, either, either I can't read it wrong because I don't have my glasses on, or it's uh, a funky little sound. That's cool. That's quite a good sound because it fits in a different register. And what we've been doing here, I'll actually shut that plug in down for now. Okay. What we've actually been doing here is we've gone along. We've started with the beat, with a kick drum. In dance music, the most important thing is actually the kick. So that's where we started. We got the right sounding kick or a kick that worked for the process of this sort of demo. We got a kick there. We got a snare just to give it the just kick and the snare feel. Then we brought in some hi-hats. Um, then we brought in, you know, like a ghost loop behind the hi-hats there. Um, then we went to the bass, which is the next frequency up. So we've kind of got some frequency, you know, with the, with, the, with the drums. We're then going to the bass, which is the next frequency to work on. Um, then I've gone from there to the middle frequencies, which was the FM8 sound, the little dun 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 dun, because that sits in a different frequency, i.e. the mid frequencies. And this carbon sound, when we get it in there, will actually fit in the higher frequency. So you can see we're just filling up the actual frequencies as we're going along. So I'll just quickly record that. Okay, 
quickly go back into the editor and we'll do a little edit of this. Make sure that they're uh, we can quanti quantize them both, stretch them out. There we go. Back from the editor. Let's get the volume of that right. get a bit of vibe on that reactor sound, what we can do is quickly like just try out a bit of side chaining. So for this we open up the compressor and we're going to side chain the compressor to the kick drum which we know is on audio channel 2. Uh, I do believe it is, it is. Now without going into details about side chaining, what it does it actually uh, we're using the kick drum as um, a trigger for the compressor so every time the kick drum hits it turns down the volume of the sound so we get that classic pumping Eric Pride's kind of pumping sound anybody that's watched me before I've gone into detail about the side chaining but uh, let's, let's just try it on this sound and see if it works Gives it a little bit of rhythm, which is quite nice. Okay, so save that. You can see what we're doing. We're just throwing things into the mix here, really we're kind of willy-nilly. We might not use them, we might use them, I don't know. We're just going to throw everything in. This is what we keep doing here. Okay, so there we go. We've got a basic groove. We've thrown a few ideas in. We've got we've been inspired by um, the initial idea that Mark came up with with the uh, with the video. Um, we're also inspired by some of the tracks that we might be DJing with. Um, we might have even taken some loops from those tracks that we're DJing with. Um, but on the next episode, we're going to be going more into detail. Uh, we're going to be creating beats from scratch. We're going to be working with Mr. Steve Duda. Um, with Mr. Steve Duda, he's going to be showing his new plug-in Nerve, which is specifically for drums. So we're going to be focusing more on the details of each individual element, i.e. beats, uh, synths, how to create, how to produce the vocal side of it. You heard there, it sounds pretty awful so far. We've got to get that rock in. So this is this the basic groove. We're going to be going further into it from here. Cheers.